Hi, I'm Hojad Askari Espeden from UC Riverside, and this is Bo, Breathing Operand Windows to Exploit Bypassing in GPUs. In this talk, I would like to tell you about our work in Micro 2020, where we found a new way to optimize the register file structure by shielding it from unnecessary accesses through operand bypassing. With the continual growth of register file size of GPUs, it has become a critical structure. Register file is the fastest and most expensive type of memory. The frequent accesses to the register file consume a substantial amount of dynamic energy. The port contention also affects overall performance. Here in this figure, you can see the size of register file unit versus other on-chip storages over different generation of NVIDIA GPUs. For example, as you can see in the figure, NVIDIA Volta GPUs have 20 megabytes of register file across the whole chip. So let me talk about our proposal very briefly. To improve power and performance of GPUs, we proposed BOW, which is a synergistic compiler and microarchitecture technique. More specifically, we have observed that there is a high degree of temporal locality in accesses to registers within a short window of instruction, meaning that there is a substantial unnecessary accesses to the huge register file structure. Our proposal, called BOW, bypasses register file accesses and instead actually passes values directly between instructions within the same instruction window. Basically here, the main idea is to shield the register file from unnecessary accesses through forwarding operands from one instruction to another, which is called operand bypassing in our work. By eliminating a substantial amount of accesses to the, to the register file, our technique is able to improve the IPC by 11%, and also reduce the register file dynamic energy by 55% through reducing the accesses to the register file. So far I have provided a big picture of our work and now I'm gonna go into a bit more details. I will briefly talk about background and will provide some motivational data. Then I will talk about the design of Bo and Bo WR followed by showing some results in the evaluation section. And then I will finish this talk by wrapping it up in the summary part. This figure shows the baseline design of operand collection stage in a GPU. More specifically, we have a 256 kilobyte register file per each streaming multiprocessor in our baseline architecture, which has been split across 32 banks. What happens in a baseline design is that as an instruction is issued to the operand collection stage, it gets assigned to the first available operand collector. Operand collector is basically a buffering unit that collects all the source operands for an instruction. One important thing here is that the operand collector generates one read request per each source register. And each operand collector in a baseline GPU can buffer up to three source operands. And the reason behind that is basically the PTX uh, instructions in PTX ISA can have up to three source operands. Once all the operands for an instruction are collected by an operand collector, then the instruction is ready to be issued to the next stage, which is execution stage. But the question here is, do we really need to generate one separate read request per each source register? Well, the answer is no. We have characterized the temporal reuse opportunities across 15 applications for different instruction window sizes. An instruction window basically refers to a number of consecutive instructions from the same one. For example, an instruction window of size 2 considers a sliding window of two consecutive instructions at a time and examines whether or not the operands of the first instruction are gonna be needed and used by the second one. While we can uh, bypass 45% of reads and 35% of writes to the register file with a window of only two instructions, a window of three instructions would eliminate substantially more accesses, which is 58% of total reads and 52% of, uh, uh, of total writes on average. However, Beyond a window size of three instructions, the reuse opportunity continues to increase slowly, reaching over 70% with, uh, with an instruction window of seven. So the question here is, can we eliminate these recurring accesses to the register file through operand bypassing? The answer is yes, and at, and at this point, I would like to talk about our technique. Bo consists of three primary components, but before I show them here, let me do a quick recap on the baseline design. As I mentioned earlier, each operand collector in the baseline design holds a single warp instruction and collects the source operands for that specific instruction. Once all the source operands for an instruction are collected, then that instruction is ready to be issued to the next stage. At the end of the execution stage, 
the computed results will be written back to the register file banks. In our design, the first primary component is widened operand collectors called bypassing operand collector or BOC that can hold more than a single warp instruction to enable potential uh, operand forwarding from one instruction to the next one. To avoid overcomplicating the design, each BOC in our paper is dedicated to a single warp. We also modified the logic of the operand collectors so they can bypass register reads for available operands. To enable read bypassing, and as the last component of Bo, we modified the write back pathway so we can direct produced values to the BOCs as well as register file banks using a write through philosophy. However, this design can only bypass read operations, but how about writes? To enable write bypassing, we came up with an enhanced design called BoWR, which approaches bypassing using a write back philosophy instead of write through. To do that, all the computed values are written back to the BOCs. Then the values are written back to the register file as instructions slide out of the uh, current window. In this case, only those writes that have been updated by a subsequent instruction within the same window will be bypassed. So clearly, BoWR can only partially bypass the write operations. What if a value is dead and let's say is not needed after getting evicted from the BOC? Do we really need to still write it back to the register file? Of course, no. But microarchitecture, unfortunately, does not have sufficient information to identify the, uh, the optimal target of the write back. To solve this issue, we task compiler to perform liveless analysis and guide with the selection of the write back target. There are three possible actions that can be taken after an instruction output value is generated. Um, let's look at an illustrative example to better understand the compiler support. So the first case is where an immediate reuse for a value is outside of the current instruction window. Um, as an example, please look at instruction in line number two, which is a global load instruction. It's writing a value into R3. The immediate reuse for R3 is line number 14, which is the last uh, instruction. Clearly, this uh, instruction is outside of the current instruction window. So in this case, there is no need to write this value of R3 into um, BOC, and it's better off just to write it back directly to the register file. Second case is where there is a reuse inside of the instruction window. Please look at instruction in line number three. There are two re uh, immediate reuses for it in the next two instructions, line number four and five. Later on, the same value would be uh, forwarded from the math instruction in line number five into the, uh, to the other math instruction in line number seven. In this case, and then at this point actually, compiler marks um, are two as a dead value. So in this case, all the reuses of this value were uh, inside of the instruction window. So in this case, there is no need to write the um, value uh, into the register file. And we even don't need to allocate a physical register to values such as R2. These cases, we consider them as um, transient operands. Other case is uh, where we have uh, a value like R1 in line number 10, the add instruction. So there is an immediate reuse for R1 in line number 11. So we just forward the value since they are both in the um, uh, same window. But the next reuse of R1 is in instruction line number 14, which is again outside of the current instruction window. So in this case, we need to write the value back to BOC first, and then once the instruction slides out of the current window into the register file. Please note that this is the, behavior, uh, the default behavior of BoWR with no compiler support. Okay, so let's jump into some results. In terms of IPC, Bo and BoWR improved the IPC by 7 and 10% respectively uh, for a window size of two instruction. We can even get higher performance um, uh, as we widen the instruction windows. This performance improvement is actually achieved by faster issuing the instructions and also being able to reducing the uh, pressure on the register file ports because uh, we're reducing total number of accesses to the register file. In terms of register file dynamic energy, Bo and BoWR substantially reduced the register file accesses 
which gets translated into 36% and 55% dynamic energy reduction for a window of three instructions. To conclude, register file is absolutely a critical structure in GPUs in terms of performance and power consumption. Our main observation in this work is that there is a high degree of temporal locality in accesses to the registers within short windows of consecutive instruction. In this work, we proposed BO and BO WR. BO is our baseline design and can bypass register read request through using a write through philosophy. On the other hand, BO WR is our enhanced design and it furtherly tasks compiler to perform liveness analysis to enable write bypassing as well as um, read bypassing. In terms of results, our technique uh, shows an improvement of IPC by 11% and it also reduces register file dynamic energy by 55%.